Hello and welcome to this video series on basic fiber optics. To understand fiber optics, you need to be familiar with a large number of theoretical concepts, physical effects, and practical devices. So this video series attempts to familiarize you with some of the most central physical concepts and some of the devices used in fiber optic engineering and research. First of all, why even study fiber optics? Well, optical fibers are essential to countless emerging technologies such as remote sensing, ultra-high-speed data transmission, and high-power lasers used for both medical and industrial purposes. Essentially, fiber optics sits at the intersection between photonics, radio frequency engineering, and telecommunications. So if you're interested in any of these topics, I definitely recommend that you check out fiber optics as well. But where to start? Well, of course, step number one should be to watch all of the videos on my channel where I talk about fiber optics. But in all seriousness, um, I spent um, four years writing a PhD about fiber optics without actually having very much prior knowledge about the, the subject. So I've decided to compile this um, resource of uh, resource list of helpful, helpful uh, pages and books and lectures that will hopefully also be of use to you. I've divided it into what we can call introductory topics that will be um, suitable for undergraduates who've taken maybe a few courses in optics and waves, and also into a segment for more advanced students, such as graduate students, or maybe undergraduates who want to specialize in sort of the field of photonics. Links to all of the material I mentioned here will be provided in the description of this video, and each individual video on my channel about fiber optics will also contain more detailed links to resources covering whatever topic is explained in that video. So the first resource I want to present is the MIT Open Courseware Lecture on Lasers. So this is a short lecture series, I think around five or six videos, where the basics of laser physics uh, are introduced. So this is things like uh, cavity resonances, gain, and even a bit of basic fiber optics theory. What's very nice about this lecture series is that it includes practical experiments that show how some of these concepts that are described theoretically actually play out in, in practice. The second resource is actually another lecture series from MIT. This time it's a 50-part lecture series where some of the more advanced um, optical concepts are introduced, such as interference, diffraction, polarization, and, and many, many others. Once again, what's very nice about this lecture series is that it includes practical experimental demonstrations, like we're seeing here, which makes it a lot easier to actually get a grasp of how these, um, these concepts play out in real life. Another interesting resource is uh, this 60-part lecture series by IIT Karakpur. I'm not entirely sure how I'm saying that right, but essentially it's a lecture series where linear optics are explained starting from Maxwell's equations. So some of the concepts explained in the, in the experiments in the previous lecture series will be derived in detail starting from first principles. So this could be things like the way that electromagnetic waves propagate inside of waveguides, its optical couplers, modulators, and many other devices. What's particularly good about this lecture series is that it has a very good structure, meaning that every time a new concept int is introduced, it's explained in great detail so you really understand what's going on, and then a tiny bit is built on top of it. So it's, um, it's clear how more advanced models follow from more simple concepts that you've already understood. Now moving into some of the more advanced topics. Uh, this is a different lecture series, actually by the same university as in the previous one, but this one focuses on what's called nonlinear optics. So these are effects that take place inside of different materials when the incident light field is so strong that it can change the properties of the material, which in, in turn change the way that the light propagates and behaves. For example, by taking a single frequency light beam coming in and then generating more colors as it propagates. So things that are explained here is concepts like um, quasi-phase matching, four-way mixing, second harmonic generation, and many others. Now, um, once again, what's very nice about this lecture series is that it has an excellent structure, meaning that when new and more advanced concepts are introduced, it's always in a step-by-step -step manner that builds on top of concepts that have already been learned and established. So definitely recommend checking this one out. Another very helpful resource when understanding advanced nonlinear optics is Nonlinear Fiber Optics by Govind Akrawal. So this is a textbook that explains how um, nonlinear effects take place specifically inside of optical fibers. The previous one mostly explains how these effects take place in what we can call um, free space, but this is specifically inside of, fi of optical fibers. So it explains things like um, dispersion, cell phase modulation, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, uh, Raman effects, and many other concepts. Now, the way I recommend that you start off with this book is actually to 
um, go through the derivation of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, at least in broad terms, some of the math can get a little bit tricky. Then you look into the chapter on dispersion and the chapter on self-phase modulation. So what's very nice about this particular book is that, like the previous lecture series, it also has very good structure. So for example, the concept of dispersion is simply explained in great detail and in isolation from all the other effects that take place inside optical fibers. So you really get a really good handle on how this particular concept, this particular effect, actually impacts the light that's propagating inside the fibers. Then, in the next chapter, surface modulation is explained in great detail and again in isolation. So you get a good understanding of how this works in by itself. And having understood all of these individual concepts separately, it's very easy to piece them together and understand how some of the more advanced effects that are caused by uh, multiple effects taking place at the same time can actually arise. Now, um, again, this is a really famous book. Some people even call it the Fiber Optics Bible. And I think most people who work in uh, the photonics or fiber optics industry will have seen this at, at some point in their career. All right, so moving away from these uh, very large lecture series into something more small scale. So many times when you're studying uh, fiber optics, you'll realize that you're not quite sure how a particular uh, concept works or how a particular device actually functions on a, on a sort of low level. And therefore, it's a good idea to check out Fiber Optics for Sales YouTube channel. So this is a company that's posted a large number of instructional tutorial videos explaining how things like couplers, isolators, DFB lasers work in these um, short, like, five-minute clips. Furthermore, their website also has more than 200 uh, written tutorials explaining some basic concepts and even some more advanced ones. Um, I think some of their older posts, actually, are the most basic ones. You may want to want to start with those. It's a really good resource if you just want to um, refresh how some of these, uh, these effects take place. Another good resource is the RP Photonics Encyclopedia. So this is an encyclopedia written from scratch by um, um, an expert in, in lasers and optics. And it covers concepts all the way from very, very simple basic stuff all the way to highly advanced nonlinear uh, non effects taking place inside of uh, fibers and even in free space. Furthermore, it also includes tutorials and quizzes that will help you solidify some of the understanding and some of the concepts that you've picked up along the way. My favorite thing about this resource is that it makes really good use of graphs and diagrams to convey different points and I think these graphs and diagrams have actually been made by the author himself using custom software that he built from scratch. As I mentioned in the Venn diagram we saw earlier in this video, fiber optics is also about electroengineering or radio frequency engineering. So for that reason, I recommend that you check out The Signal Path, which is a YouTube channel that's obviously way more famous than mine is. But essentially, this guy takes um, different instruments used in radio frequency engineering, such as oscilloscopes, um, electrical spectrum analyzers, power supplies, and many other devices. He takes them apart, puts them back together, and explains how they're, how they're built up and some of the principles uh, behind how they, how they operate. He even repairs some of them if they, they seem to be out of order. Now, these explanations um, do assume a large degree of familiarity with electrical engineering, but um, so, or at least for that reason, it can seem a bit overwhelming at first. But if you stick with it, you actually end up picking up a lot of interesting tips and concepts along the way. So definitely worth checking out. When it comes to signal processing, which is of course essential because any fiber optic signal that you detect has to be measured and converted into a digital signal, processed by a computer, and then presented to whoever actually uh, needs to know the information. So this whole process of analog and digital signal processing is, is explained very well by Ian Explains, which is another YouTube channel, again, way more famous than mine. And he goes through um, some different concepts used in, in these topics, such as Fourier transforms, sampling, bit error rate, and whatnot, simply using pen and paper examples, which I've uh, copied a little bit in my, my video series, as you'll see. So anyway, these are really great explanations, definitely worth checking out for, for reference. So with all of that said, I hope you enjoy watching these videos I've produced and that you'll get some use out of the resources I've suggested. If you're just starting out with fiber optics, I actually recommend that you try to replicate some of the experiments I've presented in these videos if you have access to the right equipment inside of your laboratory. Because as with many other things, fiber optics is a field where learning by doing truly is the, the best way to learn. Thank you for your attention.